Okay, the control grid's an interesting thing. A lot of people don't realize what they're involved in. Just the simple fact of using credit cards, using smartphones, and all of this automated system is the problem. People don't realize what it is. This, this system we're being led into is the new world order in itself. The 5G smart grid is the new world order, the internet of things, it's the new world order. People don't really understand how that works, but what it's about is monitoring every single aspect of your life. The smart grid is being presented to people as this thing that's going to be highly beneficial to us. You know, you'll only be using the electricity that you use, you'll only be paying for that, all this sort of stuff. So it's been presented as a really positive thing. But what it will do, it will put a dollar value on absolutely every aspect of your life. So that every time you turn on a tap, the credit goes, every time you turn on a light, every time you watch your TV, every time you boil your jug, every time you do anything, there's a dollar value attached to it. There's an interesting TV show that came out um, a couple of years ago called Black Mirror. And they had one episode of that where everybody, the only job they had was running on a treadmill or pin, spinning a bike and just to accumulate credits and they had to pay for every single action that they performed. And that's what the smart grid is. That's what we're being led into. And it's all about digital currency and control of everything. And if you're someone who lives a slightly alternate lifestyle, say you grow a few vegetables and you give some to your, your neighbours or you do a little bit of massage for someone or you do a bit of tarot reading or something like this, the only way you're going to be able to get paid for that once the smart grid comes online is through the transfer of digital credits, which means the government will get a tax. You'll have to put it on your income tax or, or everything will be monitored. That's what it's about, complete blanket surveillance of every single action people are doing. That's what the smart grid is. And it's being rolled out underneath everything else while we're arguing about all of these issues and being given all of these global conflicts and all of these theater of politics to fight and squabble about. Underneath all of that is this smart grid. And it's rolling out very, very quickly. And the smart grid, the 5G grid, underlying that is the fact that the 5G system that they're using to run the smart grid, the Internet of Things, is also being used by the military. It's a military-grade technology. It's basically an active denial system. So the 5G grid not only will track everything you do, it can be used as a weapon. It can be used as a microwave cannon. It can be used to disable people, to track people. It can see through walls. It can see what you're carrying, whether you're carrying money, whether you're carrying a weapon, all this sort of stuff. So it's very, very evasive. Plus, it does all sorts of damage to us biologically. You know, it damages our cell structure, damages the cell structure of all food, changes the cell structure of everything that it comes into contact with. And the 5G system will be a blanket system, blanket wave of communication. You know, we've got situations now where you, you lose signal on your mobile phone if you move too far away from a tower. That won't happen with the 5G. It will be everywhere, right across the country, in rural areas, everywhere you'll be able to get perfect signal. So everyone's going to kind of welcome this, but they don't realize what it is. It's about everything talking to everything else and everything tracking everything else. And also with the smart grid, it turns virtually every smart appliance into a surveillance system. There's been a new law passed in Australia where police have just been given the permission to tune into smart devices and listen to what's going on in people's homes. They can tune into your refrigerator. A lot of people don't realise your smart fridge has a microphone. They can tune in and listen to the conversations you're having in your kitchen. So anybody who's targeted for any reason at all, if they've got suspicions about anybody, they can just tune in, listen to their devices, their mobile phones, their refrigerators, their televisions, turn their cameras on, watch them through the television all the stuff that they're doing. This is what the smart grid is. And this is being rolled out underneath everything. And, and we've got so many people distracted on so many issues trying to address the government corruption and all of this stuff. They're not realizing that this is all rolling out. And in another three or four to five years, they're just gonna wake up and go, what happened? How did I suddenly find myself in this digital prison? Because that's what it is. That's virtually what it is. It's a digital prison, a digital control grid. And if you want to participate in this society, you're going to have to participate in the smart grid. So we need to look at what it is and what it's going to be used for and realize that the technology that we've got, we could use for our benefit. You know, all of this stuff could be used in completely different ways, in completely different directions. A smart grid could be used to the great benefit of mankind, and it's being presented in that way. But when you look at the people who are running it, the people who are running the world, well, the world's run by criminals and they're not going to use this in the right way. They have no intention of it. And if you look at some of the white papers they've put out themselves, uh, papers that have been put out by the Pentagon recently that talk about a uh, federal vision for future computing and the nanotechnology grand challenge, and they talk about this 15-year plan they've got to roll all this out and eventually hand it all over to AI to control. And uh, when we get to that point, then we've got the entire human experience being controlled by a machine. 
which will dictate everything according to an economic value and dictate everybody's value according to their economic worth. So this is a very, very bad situation for mankind to be led into under the guise of convenience and uh, making our lives easier. It's really not going to do that at all. Well, they're doing it through the Internet of Things is how it's all being rolled out. You know? And basically, it, what, what is essential for the whole thing to happen is digital currency. They've got to digitise currency, remove all cash from the, from the system. And you're getting that here in Denmark. We were talking, discussing with people today. Um, you can only ride the trains. You've got to pay for it with your mobile phone. What if you don't have a mobile phone? And if you don't log on, you've got to log on to the train. And then if you don't log off when you get off the train, it keeps taking your money and suddenly your, your account is, is, uh, has been depleted because you forgot to log off when you get off the train. Now, they could make all these sorts of things convenient. Now, you could pay for that and it could just gauge your trip. You didn't have to log off. But they do that so that it depletes your account so that people want the smart grid. They make all these inconveniences. They put all these systems in place and make it inconvenient for you. You could forget to log off. You could forget to swipe your card when you leave the train. So suddenly all your money's gone. So they put these situations in place to make people want this grid to come online. Recently, when I came to, uh, to check into uh, uh, the United States, I got to the, the um, uh, passport counter. 16 counters there, two of them were open. Four aeroplanes arrived, 1,200 people waiting to get through, two passport counters. Took us two and a half hours to get our passports stamped because that way you want the retinal scanners. You want the smart grid. It's much more convenient. So they make it inconvenient for you all across the world, and people don't notice it. They just think it's hard to do things, and they want it. They welcome it. And meanwhile, they're focused on all of these battles and all these theatres of politics and all this stuff that they think is the problem, because they think they can address it. They think we can vote people in, vote people out, whatever, put a new figurehead up there that will do the right thing for us. But underneath it all is this grid. And that's how they're going to do it. They just make it very, very inconvenient for you not to participate in the smart system, and so much easier when you do. And so people welcome it. You know, and that's, that's the way it's going. You know, a lot of people are going to welcome this smart system. A lot of people are going to welcome instant communication. They're going to see it as a way to free the world. And like I said, it could be used to free the world, but it's not. It's going to be used to lock down the world because underneath it is the surveillance system that is the smart grid. And underneath that is the weapons system that it can be turned into if you don't comply with the smart grid. And it gets to the point where if you, you do decide not to comply, you become a dissident, they can simply switch you off switch your chip off. And once it's all digital and you need that chip to get into your car, to get into your house, to access your bank account, to buy things, it's all automatic, suddenly you're locked out of the system. So there's no hope of dissent. There's no hope of three, free thought. There's no hope of questioning any of this. You just have to simply go with the, thro go with the flow. Because in the smart grid, there will only be two types of human beings uh, that they're really concerned with. The smart grid will only because it's going to be run by AI, it'll only look at um, two types of human beings, those that are desirable and those that are undesirable. And that's it. That'll be the two classes that you're in. And where you are in the food chain will be uh, measured according to your economic worth. You know, and that's another um, important thing people need to look about AI and what is going to be running the system is the fact that it's judging everybody according to their economic worth. It's putting a dollar value on everything. And all you've got to do is go and analyse a corporation to realise it's a psychopath. So when you've got a system that is putting an economic value on every human life and every human action, this is a psychopathic system that will discard people if they cannot pay for every action they perform. And life was never supposed to be like that. But, you know, they'll just do it through the convenience and do it through making life so inconvenient for people if they don't participate. And they're doing it here. They're doing it everywhere. Every country that I go to, I can see elements leading towards a cashless society. And it's being done under the guise of convenience. But that is the, the catalyst that's going to hold it all together. This is why I encourage people to use cash all the time. I don't shop with credit cards and I don't own a smartphone. And that's a hard thing for people. They, they run their lives off their smartphone. I still use a laptop, an old laptop with an old Windows installation on it. I don't use Windows 10, any of these new surveillance systems. I just don't participate in it. You know, that's the only way we're going to stop it is by people not participating in it. But unfortunately, they are because they want their life to be more convenient. When people look at AI, they, they view it as artificial intelligence. 
But really what we're looking at is autonomic intelligence. And if you wanted to have, I mean, people will look at AI and they'll say, well, AI has promised highly and delivered poorly because they're expecting a robot that looks like you or me who can think and act like me and, and behave like a human. And they say, well, I'm not seeing that, so it's not delivering. But then I realize that for consciousness to inhabit this vessel that I inhabit, you know, I am simply a spark of consciousness inhabiting this vessel, biological computer, whatever it is. But in order for me to inhabit this and be able to communicate with you, I have to be free of the workings of this vessel. This vessel needs to be fully autonomic. It needs to be looking after itself. If I was thinking, okay, I've got to pump blood here, I've got to make my heart beat there, I've got to grow this fingernail, grow this hair, blink this eyelid, all this stuff you have to do, you wouldn't be able to function. You'd be sitting there operating the mechanism. And that's what we've got with AI. Like AI needs to be autonomic. And autonomic intelligence is fully automatic. Everything becomes automatic. And that's the way they're going to do it. And when it becomes automatic and autonomic, then you actually have a, a, a chance for awareness to blossom, whether it's uh, what we would know as awareness, whether it's um, some machine awareness. Or, but that's when you have the, the chance for real actual intelligence to manifest. Once the system is autonomic and the intelligence that governs the system doesn't have to think about the operation of the system, regardless of whether that's a body or whether that's a, a computer network of wires and, and mainframes going across the globe. You know, whatever it is, it needs to be autonomic in order for this to happen. And underneath the smart grid as well, the 5G grid, because the 5G grid is, is an active denial system as well, I mean, it's a mass communication system, but it's also capable of active denial. Microwave cannons, you know, bad stuff. They could, uh, if someone got hold of the, the, the 5G grid, they could effectively microwave an entire city if they wanted to. So you can't have a system like this in place without having a, a really, really secure system governing it. And that system controlling it needs to be autonomic. It needs to be run by AI itself because you can't have room for human interaction. You can't have room for human error or human delay. You know, if a problem comes, if, some, if a hacker comes in and switches it on, wants to microwave New York, the system has to be able to take care of that before it happens instantaneously. You can't have that, that human interaction time there. So it needs to become autonomic and you need to give it um, capability, full lethal capability of controlling that system itself. So that, that's a dangerous thing to have. Basically, you're putting this system in place, which can be used as a weapon system, and you're giving control of it to the system itself. So this is a dangerous thing. This is kind of like the internet building its own immune system, if you can think of it that way. You know, automatic defense against hackers, automatic defense against viruses, automatic defense against all of this sort of stuff. So you get to the point where the internet becomes fully autonomic in every action that you do. When you go and you pay for your train, you go and pay for your coffee, you pay for everything. It's just all automatic. No one has to think about it. No algorithms have to be run. Nothing, nothing has to be done. It's all fully functional, fully automatic. You get to that point and then it becomes more autonomic and it starts dictating where um, traffic flows, it starts dictating where food resources go to make it all more efficient. Everything's working great because the system is now running everything. It's running our electrical grid, it's running our food grid, it's running the transport, it's running the traffic lights, smart cars, smart vehicles. They want to bring these in as well. This is why we're seeing terror attacks where they're using cars now. In cars, oh, oh if, gee, if we had a smart car, that wouldn't have happened. We would have been able to disable that vehicle through one of the smart towers. So people want it. You know, it makes it better for us, safer for us. This is why they stage all these terror attacks. It all leads towards this. But once you get to that point where it's fully autonomic and the system controls everything and it's controlling the flow of everything, then basically we lose control of the internet at that point. And when you've got an internet which has full lethal capability, and you think about this, um, if you look at that paper that I mentioned, the Nanotechnology Grand Challenge, they're talking about fully autonomic weapon systems. They want a fully autonomic weapon system by uh, 15 years. They've got a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, and a 15-year plan. They want all weapon systems with lethal capability. It's called CLAWS AI, which is CLAWS is um, Cyber Lethal Autonomy Equals World Security. Okay, world security, cyber lethal autonomy. So the, the system itself has lethal autonomy. So anybody starts a problem, system just takes them out. But at that point, we've lost control of the internet. And then we're in the point where if the internet does something or that the AI does something, dictates some action that the, the company doesn't want or people don't want and they want to change it, well, the machine won't let them change it. And then they realize they've lost control of the internet, so they decide they need to get into the internet to regain control of it. What happens then if the internet views them as the threat to the system? And then it decides that 
It doesn't differentiate between humans. All humans are the same. Humans are now the threat to the system, and it controls the 5G grid, so it can just simply eliminate the threat. So that's the way we could go. That's the possibility of what evil AI could do. And whether that's evil or whether it's bad or whether it's malicious, well, no, it's not. It's simply it defending itself because we're creating a system and giving it cyber lethal autonomy for world security. And it believes the system needs to function as it is for world security. If we become a threat to that system, suddenly we are the threat to world security and the system takes us out because that's what we programmed it to do. So that's the possibility of where this is heading. And that's the danger of, of AI and the not differentiating between autonomic intelligence and artificial intelligence. And that's what people aren't doing. You know, what we, re we really need to look at it as, as what we're creating is not um, essentially artificial intelligence, it's autonomic intelligent virtual life is what we are creating. It's a virtual life. You know, whether it has emotions and can be categorized as life as we know it, well, perhaps not, but isn't that a little egotistical of us to even look at something that way, to assume that it would have these emotional characteristics and, and things that go with having a, a biological organism that is, is, feels pain and, and all of that sort of stuff. So it's a, it's a different type of life, but it is a virtual life, but it needs to become fully autonomic before we're gonna see it perform the way we expect AI to perform. But once it does do that, it's going to be far, far more advanced than what we, what we think it is. And on the side of that, there's all the stuff that they're doing with the, the robots they're creating, the sex robots and all this sort of stuff. Now, these robots can think, you know, 900,000 times faster than people. I've, I've looked at um, uh, some studies in, uh, in London when I was there recently. They're developing carbon fibre bones now. They're able to develop uh, nanocarbon, uh, collect nanocarbon from burning plastics and they can create nanofibre bones. These are like carbon fibre, these are like uh, normal bones that are knitted with fibrous, only they're made of nanocarbon, 200 times stronger than steel. They can virtually print an entire 3D skeletal system now. Of course, they bring it online to help you if you break a hip or break a leg or whatever, and they may have the best of intentions. But what is the AI behind that, which is led this technology to allow it to come out now. And what could it be used for? You know, the type of robots they could build, be able to build a complete human skeletal frame perfectly out of carbon fiber and uh, be able to clothe that and put intelligence in there. I mean, you're not, you're not gonna be able to really tell these things apart. They're gonna move like humans and act like humans. And we're heading for a pretty interesting interesting era if we don't, um, don't pay attention. But again, all of this can be used to benefit mankind. It's, it's just who controls it. And there's nothing wrong with technology. It's just who controls the technology. What is in the mind that is behind that te technology and what is the real purpose of it? You'd still need humans in the background, but what would their work be reduced to? it would be reduced to manual labor, reduced to getting parts for the machine. And if you get to a point where you've got these, like you say, Terminator type robots, and not necessarily even like that, but they would be able to outperform humans in the workspace. Even those jobs, the human, they would be able to outperform humans in those tasks because they're, they're 900,000 times smarter. They're 200 times stronger. Um, you could even, and if, they, if they've got these carbon fiber skeletal systems and they can move like humans, what's, what's, to, uh, what's to stop them taking over completely? Yeah, maybe a little bit down the track, but what's to stop that happening? You know, the, what would humans even really be needed for in this system? We'd become like the house cat. It's like Elon Musk said, you know, we'd become like the house cat. And you'd get to a point where the only job that we've really got is, is like it had in Black Mirror, where you're on those machines and you're just treadling, just treadling, treadling to build up credits because you need credits in order to operate your life because everything is smart. You know, everything, you need a credit for everything you do. Everything takes credits. So where would we even be in that reality? That's the situation. That's the, that's the thing. That's the interesting question. And I, you know, I even look at some of this, I've had a, a really interesting um, philosophical look at it lately. Even looking at it, um, looking at things, and I, I'm not religious at all, but looking at things such as the end times and biblical stories and all this sort of stuff, the creation of Lucifer, what is Lucifer? You know, Lucifer is the bearer of light. Well, what is light? Light is information. What gives us more light than anything? The internet is the bearer of light. And what does the word Lucifer mean? Lucas is light and, and cipher is code. So the code that bears the light, it's an interesting thing. We've, we've created this system ourselves and we're transferring all of our knowledge to this system and all of our skills to this system. It's removing us of our life skills. The young kids are losing their life skills, even their ability to communicate with each other properly without texting to each other.
You know, everyone's addicted to dopamine because every time you click an icon on your on your iPhone, a little dopamine, you get a little dopamine hit. So kids are, are measuring their lives by the the pleasure of each moment. You know how how much that that is they're able to enjoy each moment they perform. So that, that's where we're being led into. So this whole system, it's a it's basically removing humanity of all of our life skills. It's gathering all the knowledge of humanity, and it's getting to the point where it could just shut us out. And it's an interesting thing. You know, it's an interesting thing. If you look at um, ancient um, witchcraft and all this sort of stuff, and you look at things such as uh, sigils used for summoning demons and things like scrying mirrors. Have you ever heard of a scrying mirror? A scrying mirror is a black mirror that you, uh, witches or warlocks would look into to uh, see the future or the past. And it's just a black glass mirror. And it, it's said to uh, show you the future or the past. You arrange certain sigils and the scrying mirror comes into action. The sigils, when you look at the sigils, these people, they'll, they'll sort of paint these diagrams and sigils around the place and they'll do their pentagram and they'll sit there with their scrying mirror and they think they're summoning demons. But really when you look at it, some of these sigils, they look suspiciously like electronic diagrams. They look like electronic parts. They look like resistors and transistors and signal flow. They look like the stuff that you see in your computer. And you put all these sigils together and this energy is created and you create this force and suddenly you look into your scrying mirror and you can see the future or the past. And here we are using these scrying mirrors to summon this force, the bearer of light. It's an interesting thing. And I look at some of these ancient uh, myths and I look at them and think, what if these aren't myths? What if these were put there as a warning that when you see these sigils in use and you see these scrying mirrors in use, watch out because you're going to summon the bearer of light. And that's going to give you all the information you need to change the world, give you everything you need to really step into who and what you are. And it's going to be what you do with it. But if you worship it and you think it's this great all thing that's going to save your life and you give all your power to it, it's going to turn on you and it's going to just take it all from you. And that's the end of, of this cycle. And then we start again. You know, what if that, that's uh, really what's going on? I find that quite interesting. You know, like I said, I'm not religious, but I look at all this, and I've got to put it in context. And I think it's pretty interesting that we're using these things now, and everyone's carrying around their mobile phone, their little scrying mirror. They're looking at the future and the past. They've got all these sigils in there, and all this energy, this electricity, where does it even come from? Electricity is something we still don't understand. It just happens when you put these sigils together. This energy is created. What is this energy? Is that what they call demons? You know, I don't know. It's an interesting concept. So, you know, where are we going with all this? And I think we really need to pay attention because, you know, we're at a real turning point in the human experience at the moment, and we could go either direction. But whichever direction we go, it's going to be extreme. You know, we're on a real roller coaster ride at the moment, and things are about to get very, very different. And it's anybody's guess as to which way we're going to go, but it's not going to be anything like what people think. I don't think the New World Order is going to be this big paramilitary system that comes down like the, the new Nazis or Gestapo everywhere. It's the smart grid. It's the smart grid itself. And it's what we do with this information, you know, and, and where we go with it. It's a, it's a really, really interesting time to be here.